Hello. We saw on Friday that the unemployment rate went down a little bit and the number of jobs that came back from the devastating lows in March um, creeped up again to 1.5 million jobs. So the question now among economists is whether or not what we saw in the, la in the last two months was just a suppression of economic activity because the economists and policymakers were following the advice of the virologists and the public health officers, and we suppressed economic activity, and only the essential workers and the remote workers were working. Many other people we saw in leisure and hospitality got laid off, um, and others um, who weren't working died in nursing homes and prisons. So we are wondering if we just have a suppression or is there a recession lurking behind those numbers? We, before the recession, there was a lot of concern that wealth and income inequality was causing a permanent stagnant loss of demand among middle class and low income workers. They had not gotten a raise for probably um, a decade. Um, white workers, male workers in the 1970s made more when adjusted for inflation than they do now. So there's a lot of um, concern that all the income gains were going to the rich and that they were saving uh, money or spending money abroad, um, that there just wasn't enough middle class, lower middle class demand. That concept was called secular stagnation. And many of us thought that we were due for a recession, mainly because of these underlying insufficient demand because the broad middle class, most households just didn't have the money. So the question is, was there always secular stagnation lurking within the economy that would cause a recession? Or in, on March 16th, was there a drastic suppression of economic activity that caused the GDP to plummet? Remember, a recession is defined as a 2% drop in GDP two quarters in a row. This time, we saw a 5% drop in GDP. What I would like you to do is have in front of you the Richmond Federal Reserve's indicators that I link to um, in my syllabus. I want you to look at those numbers. It's on page four, on slide four, along with me. The economic um, growth of an economy, the econ e economy um, of any society is measured by gross domestic product. In the United States, it's $18.9 trillion. It was over $19 trillion last year. Um, but now it dropped precipitously um, by 5%. It's now only 18.9. The biggest part of GDP is consumption spending. That's $13 trillion of, is what households spend. Remember what's spent is on final goods and services. Investment demand, this is businesses, small businesses, big business, is an important part of the economy, but it's much smaller, $3.3 um, trillion, with just less than um, a trillion is spent by households for their houses. That's called investment. But by and large, it's businesses' confidence that the economy is doing well that causes them to invest in structural uh, um, plants or in um, in machines or even research and development. Another big part, part of the economy that's very important is government. That is 7.5 trillion out of um, 18.9 trillion, a very important, um, significant size of the, of, of the total spending. And the amount of um, exports, what foreigners spend in our economy minus what we buy from other countries is called net exports. And that is um, still small. It's um, less than a trillion dollars. So we hear a lot about China and a lot of demand for consumers, household consumers for Chinese goods. It's actually less, much less significance 
than uh, government spending or consumer spending on domestic goods. We saw with that Federal Reserve um, data that GDP um, fell by 5%. Um, yeah, by 5%. Um, personal income, sorry, personal spending fell by 6.8%. Consum um, investment spending um, fell by 7.9%, a little bit of a boost in, in, um, in residential, probably in January and February, not March. Government spending went up by 0.8. So here we have negative, negative, um, and a positive here. And both exports were down. The rest of the world, since it was a world pandemic, also suppressed their economies. Um, but imports from Americans were, were down even further. So this was a little bit of a stimulus, the fact that we didn't um, import as much as we, um, as we exported. Little stimulus from there, a little stimulus from government. Government is much more significant. Another way to look at what has to happen or how we can predict whether or not we'll be in a recession after the economy opens up is what's called the Keynesian cross diagram. This just says that if spending equals output, we won't have a lot of surplus. We won't have extra cars on the car lots. We won't have extra um, clothes in the, um, in the warehouses. We won't have milk going to waste um, in the dairies as we saw in, in March, it was devastating. When spending equals output, we're in an equilibrium and we're stable. If there's a lot more output than there is spending, we're in a deep recession. And that's clearly where we were, or where we are now. That we have spending is a, um, is a lot less than, um, than total output. This is the equivalent all along here, spending equals output. And right now um, we are be below that line. Note here that government spending doesn't matter what GDP is. The government can decide to spend or not spend. It doesn't really matter how much income is going into the economy. The same thing with investments. That's because businesses and government can basically borrow, but consumers need income coming into their households. So when income goes up, they spend more. When income goes down, they spend less. And so you have consumption depending upon income. The only way that you can get total spending to equal output is to boost up borrowing. And the only place we can do that is in G. So I just want to say that to the policymakers and the politicians that said that the Friday unemployment report showed that the economy was on recovery, they don't know. And it's quite possible that given this huge gap between how many workers who want to work, another 30 million, and given the excess supply of all sorts of products, um, we see them accumulating in the warehouses. We see oceans of cars not being sold. We see airplanes um, not flying. Some of the flights are full, but many, many flights have been canceled. That there's a lot more potential output in the economy than there is demand. So we are looking forward to government increasing spending, keeping teachers employed, counselors, um, spending money to keep K through 12 up so that we perhaps will get to a point where we can boost the economy back up to where it was in 2019, or it may just come halfway there and level off. The economists have called that a, um, a V shape recovery where it goes right back up to 2019 that um, or a Nike swoosh where it goes up a little bit but then flattens out or what a lot of us um, in the department think will be a W, an, an increase 
and then a second wave of of the virus and cases and deaths, and then back down again, a W. So will it be V-shape, a Nike swoosh, or a W? We'll see.